Is it good? Maybe. Is it bad? Well, maybe. Oh, this is gonna be a tough review. Hello all of my otaku friends, my name is Prof Otaku, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are reviewing a new manga release, released actually today by Viz Media. This is a throwback manga. This is Dragon Quest, The Adventures of Dai. Now if you are familiar with the name Dragon Quest, that's because that it originally is a video game series. It spans nine main series titles and many different kinds of spin-offs. The goal of the game is that you are the main character, you are the hero, you have a party of people, and your goal is to defeat a common enemy in a fantasy land. Simple enough, right? Believe it or not, the franchise itself is credited for being a catalyst for console RPGs in the 2000s and beyond, and it's considered to be one of the most popular, if not the most popular video game franchise in Japan. So think Final Fantasy, Nintendo, all those. Dragon Quest was there right at the top. So the story is by Riku Sanjo and the art is by Koji Inada and this is the duo that created Beat and the Vandal Buster. Now Beat and the Vandal Buster was serialized in Shonen Jump after The Adventures of Die. So the manga first started serializing in 1989 in Shonen Jump and it was approved for a two chapter short series called Gush Gulp and we see that in the first two chapters here of this omnibus. The success of the first two chapters led Shonen Jump to give them a three chapter sequel and it's also presented in here as well and that's called Diomite. After the success of the first five chapters it began its current serialization and it went all the way up to 37 volumes so it's quite a hefty series. So the story, just like the video game story, is quite simple. We have a dark lord who was defeated a long time ago by an unknown hero. And the minions that were in control of this by this dark lord were free and they went off to a faraway island to live in peace. Now this island is inhabited by a little boy named Dai. And his goal is to be the hero of the island, to protect the peace and be the guardian of this island and the monster in it. However, one day the peace of the island is threatened by a familiar enemy and Dai must learn how to become a hero. He must train to become the top of the top. So let's quickly talk about this release. This is actually a one and a half volume release. There are 15 chapters in this first omnibus. So this is very similar to the Full Metal Alchemist setup. Is it my favorite setup in the world? No. And as I continue to read this, I'm not going to be reading it in one and a half volumes I'm probably just gonna stack them in stacks of three <laughs> the size of the manga is great and there are some absolutely fantastic color pages in here and I'm gonna show you guys the art it's really really cool actually one whole chapter in here is fully colored and by fully colored it starts fully colored and then it goes into that orange and gray shading and so that happens several times in several different chapters so that's a very nice touch by Viz and it kind of immerses you into the story a little bit more. So the biggest issue I have with this release is that it's $20. This thing is $20. And is it worth that price range? I mean, shoot, if I'm going to pay $20 for a volume and a half, it better be a hardcover. Because when I look at like Full Metal Alchemist and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, obviously it can be done. I don't know why it's $20 but it's $20 and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later and why that causes issues for accessibility of this manga. So let's talk about the positives. Just like every Should You Read Sunday review that I've done on the channel, I like to give three positives and three negatives, if there are three negatives. So for the positives, this is a fun turn your brain off read. This isn't meant to be taken seriously and you shouldn't approach this manga seriously. Think Shaman King. You know, it's supposed to be a manga gravitated towards a younger audience, especially with the artwork and the simple storyline, the fun monsters. So you can't take this like a seinen or something like that. It's supposed to be just a 
relaxing read that you're just supposed to have fun with it. The next positive I have is that the art is really, really fantastic. It reminds me a lot of Dragon Ball with the character designs, but this is just such fun. It's very creative artwork. It's really beautiful. There's a lot of detail in the backgrounds and also the character and monster design are really, really interesting. The last positive that I have about this first omnibus is that the pacing is great. Really fast paced. The things get pushed through really fast with the information, but it's a good balance between information and action. Every chapter always puts something new on the table and it's a lot of fun. And that might be because you've got these two short stories before the main story happens, but I have to say that I was definitely engaged the entire time I was reading it. So let's talk about the negatives for this manga because there are definitely some negatives. The first issue that I have with it is that the power system is kind of boring. So this is a fun kids action fantasy series. So you've got two different powers at least presented in the first volume. You've got the sword and you've got the magic. And that's it. There's some basic spells, some basic sword play. And yeah, I mean, it's just kind of lackluster. We haven't seen anything crazy with the power system yet. So maybe that develops later on, but at least at the beginning, it's just nothing to shake your head about. The next issue I have with it are the characters. Dai as a main character is just okay, you know? And I was thinking to myself, you know, Dai just seems like a standard main character. He's just this weak boy. He can't do magic in a magic world, but he wants to be a hero, but he can use his sword. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> but I was thinking, why is Dai kind of boring to me? And I think it's because in the Dragon Quest games, you are the main character. So you don't have to dive into your story that much because it's, it's you, right? And so hopefully, even though we're seeing this from a third person perspective, I hope we dive more into Dai's backstory. I hope we get to see like who he is and why we should care about him. I hope it's not just, oh, I get stronger and I beat up the bad guys. Last but not least, this manga is pretty polarizing. And what I mean by that is that there's two reasons why this just doesn't work for everybody. Number one, the price point. I still think this is too expensive. I think that this should have been $15 and it should have been like that. It should not be 20. This is gonna be really hard for people to go ahead and put down just to try it out at the bookstore. So I wouldn't recommend getting this unless it's on sale or you get it used. If you really are intrigued, then yeah, buy the first volume and see if you like it. But I don't know if $20 justifies trying something out, especially if it's just a volume and a half. Another issue I have about this is that because this gravitates towards a younger audience, the more serious manga reader, somebody who likes seinen manga or shoujo or jose, this is really hard to get into because this is for a very specific type of reader. Now that is to say that those people who enjoy those genres more won't enjoy this because I didn't like Shaman King at the beginning because it was very similar to the style of The Adventure of Dai. However, as I continue to go through Shaman King, it has become one of my favorite shonen reads as of late. It's really, really cool. And so I think that this has the potential to go the same way. We're just going to have to see. So give it a try if you're looking for something different but if you're pretty dead set on i'm a sane and reader don't check this one out you won't like it so to conclude will i continue to pick this up yes i will but i will with reservations i like that viz is bringing this back i like that publishers are giving older manga a chance to shine either with a complete new boot because this has never been published in english before or a republication. I'm hoping for things like Zatch Bell will come back with the recent announcement of the sequel. And so I want to support these type of publications for new things in the future. And it's not half bad, but I do think there are some polarizing things that make this a hard sell. So if you think this sounds interesting to you, pick it up. 
I enjoyed it. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but this is a great manga if I just want to have a good time and just relax and have some fun. So if you enjoyed this review, please hit that like button, tap the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you know when more of my videos will come out, and I will see you in the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.